Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of On the Couch. I'm Thomas Napoli. And I'm Avish Khan. To start off our show today, we're here with Kelso Burrell and Kayla Calloway to talk about Rowan's Club Wings. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you guys doing? Great. Mm -hmm. How are you? Yeah. So let's first start off with what is the acronym for Wings? Well, uh, Wings is an acronym for Women Inspiring a New Generation of Scientists. How did you come up with it? Is it a national organization? Did you come up with it yourself? Tell us a little bit about the story. Um, so there's a lot of um, clubs out there, or organizations promoting women in STEM, but we uh, started WINGS on, on campus at Rowan ourselves. Um, we would like to be associated with like other associations, but for right now it's strictly a Rowan thing. Um, it's not just, it's called Women Inspiring a New Generation of Scientists, but we really keep it open to all STEM majors. And yeah, do you want to talk about how we started it? Yeah, um, I liked the name Wings at first. I went to the academic advisor, Dr. Dobbins, and um, she's the only full-time female physics faculty at Rowan currently. And um, she said, um, yeah, she helped me make the acronym out of the words. So you mentioned women in STEM, and I understand you had a, an event on, um, I, know, I think it was April 8th, about women in STEM. What, uh, how, how'd that go? What was that like? Um, so that was our STEM Women Q&A and networking event. Uh, we just started as a club two years ago. So we're in our second year and we did this thing last year where we collected a panel of two women from academia and um, the workforce. And we get to have the opportunity to ask them questions and see how they got to where they were, ask them anything we'd like really. And then we have a networking event after with them. Yeah, it was a really good experience because you got to see like each, each woman is unique and they all follow these different paths and you kind of just realize like, wow, they, nobody knows really what they're doing until it happens. You know, you have this plan set out, five years I'm going to be doing this and then the next second it changes and you're doing something completely different. So it was really cool for um, the girls to see like, hey, like it's okay to drift away from things, change your mind and explore different things. So I thought it was really beneficial to, for uh, the girls to really uh, ask these types of questions and get to know a more realistic feel for it. So Awesome. And I saw on Proflink, at least listed there, you guys already have 75 members, which for two years is a lot. How do you think or yeah. why do you think you're so successful so quickly? And we don't even think all of our members are on the Proflink, yeah. so join the Proflink Wings <laughs> members out there but uh, and everyone on Rowan campus. But, um, um, I think it was a, a club that was kind of needed. We had um, engineering has a couple female engineering clubs, but there is nothing for the other three letters of STEM, the science, technology, and math. So we, I don't know, we kind of like fill that need, I think. And I think uh, what's really unique about WINGS is that we're not just strictly like uh, professional development or academic development. It's also like we're a club to support each other. So it's like, it's kind of the best of both worlds in my opinion. Like we. We do like we do networking workshops, try to uh, better prepare ourselves, but then we go out to see movies together, and it's really like a support system. So I think that's what makes so many people interested in it. Science is so naturally competitive in the classroom. Yeah. You always want to be the best. You want to be better than the person next to you. Score higher, but our club we really try to break that and be like, hey, like we all know science sucks sometimes, <laughs> and we all know what it makes us feel like sometimes, and value the successes and failures with it, and. We try to build each other up in wings, most importantly. We're there for each other. So when we see members like throughout the science building, we have a couple things we do, like the bird call. So if you see another call. wings <laughs> member, you give them a little coo, coo. <laughs> and it just lets them know like, hey, I'm in the science building struggling too, so. <laughs> yeah, we really try to enforce the fact that someone else's success does not mean you're a failure. So we, They're gonna it's bring all you about up bringing each other up, exactly. Mm -hmm. I completely understand the feeling low because I was a bio major for like a semester, so mm. I feel that. I wish <laughs> you joined Wings. It was a tough time, not gonna lie. I've come a long way to being here. But what are some events that you have just for each other? Because you seem to be really close if you guys are like, you know, calling out to each other. So what do you guys do together? Um, we, I like to, we like to do an experiment once a semester, so that's pretty bonding. Like last semester, we made uh, bath bombs. And like science does, sometimes it doesn't go well or correctly. And um, those are the best times. Though. Yeah, they're <laughs> you run out of baking soda, you got to do what you can. It's it's cool. We did a do-it-yourself lava lamps. That was really cool, and it just it gets people excited to come out and do something other than just sitting listening to someone lecture. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's a good balance between the two. So who have been your mentors to get to the part that you're at now? Ooh, that's a great question. <laughs> I would love, you know, like we started this 
kick butt club for women in science, but um, my greatest mentor is probably Dr. Vaden, um, Dr. Timothy Vaden. He's very for like pro women in science. And actually when I started the club, I was thinking of asking him to advise it because there was just such a lack of full-time female faculty professors to advise the club. But he pointed me towards Dr. Dobbins. But yeah, Dr. Vaden is my research professor and he's always there for everything. He's really excellent. He's like a hidden gem at Rowan. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting Kelso says that um, because my mentor was Dr. Nathaniel Nietzsche. And I think it's really important, um, like having like strong women mentors is great and all, but I think it's really important to have these strong supportive male mentors in your life because it's, uh, they, they can offer a lot more perspective and it's not just all about like, oh, like you're a woman so you know what it's like. Like you could, it's great to have that support from um, your male counterparts, so. They're the guys yeah. who understand women who take, you know, their wives are probably scientists out there who face it daily and they know and they're, you know. Well, thank you. It just you. shows that we need more women in science up there. <laughs> of course, well, best of luck with your club and thank you for coming on the couch today, but don't go anywhere because after the break, we have a mad science experiment coming up, so you won't want to miss this. Stay with us. Me, I am captain of the track team. Cool. She doesn't really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? <gasps> wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah, I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. Texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, is she texting me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. Hello everyone and welcome back to On The Couch. So we just heard from Kelso and Kayla, but now we have a mad science experiment via the company Mad Science. So Kelso and Kayla, take it away. Thank you, hello, uh, my name is Kelso. I'm joined again with Kayla, my two lovely assistants, Tom and Mavish, who you know weekly. <laughs> um, so I work for a company called Mad Science and my persona is Rainbow Kelso and I am a mad scientist. So mad science is really awesome in a lot of ways. Essentially, we get to come into schools and perform experiments like these with children, get them psyched about science, let them get some hands-on action with so the experiments. So today? Yeah. yeah <laughs> my, you guys are much better right now. So. Hopefully, we'll cooperate. I don't know. That's might good get to exciting. Hear. Yeah, so um, some schools cut out science funding, unfortunately, and this is a kind of a way to bring back science and get kids interested and involved from a young age. So I have a couple of experiments today. We'll start with the Van de Graaff. So, a Van de Graaff is, I'll have my lovely. So for those that don't know, a Van de Graaff generator essentially works the same as any static electricity when you rub your socks on the carpet, touch a doorknob, get shocked. Basically the same principle here. So this rubber belt essentially is rotated around and it rubs against felt and it's gonna essentially rob its electrons and it's gonna keep rotating and Light charges, um, they never want to be together. They always want to separate. So this hollow, spe hollow sphere, as the electrons are moved up, they're essentially just going to come along and sit on, like, as far apart on the edges of the, of the sphere. So do you want to? That's wanna perfect. Yeah, so we have Mavish, our lovely assistant. So first, I'll ask her to step on our stool Hi. we have back here. So you want to be off the ground, because the sphere is going to collect electrons, and those are going to be transferred to you. So, um, Mavish, you can put both of your hands on the Van de Graaff here, <laughs> and... I'm so excited. Now in science, Ooh, we like to do ow, I feel magic magic. power. <laughs> All right, so in a few moments, we should see Mavish's hair stand I can up. feel the mic shocking me. Is that bad? <laughs> Everything is fine. Just a little bit. It's not, I'm okay. not like... Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> like drama, <laughs> build up on the belt, and they um, go through Mavish, and then they'll try to extend to the furthest place they can, electrons like to Which do. Which is the hair. Yes, exactly. So we're just going to wait for this to build up. I have my magic neutralizing stick, which will make sure if anything 
unfortunate happens. How are you feeling, Mavish? I'm all right. I'm okay. I'm excited. Okay. Sensation. <laughs> the sensation's a little scary. I'm not going to lie, everyone, but I'm okay. Yeah. I don't feel like a body shock or anything, so it's okay. Don't try this at home. Don't, <laughs> don't whip out a Van de Graaff or steal one from a lab and bring it at home. Um, any any motion on your hair there, Madge? I don't know. I can't feel anything. I don't want to touch you. Uh, <laughs> it's getting there. So Mavish's hair will start to rise once the electrons transfer on. There may be a disconnect potentially from the microphone, but yeah. Okay. It's starting to see a little bit right there in the front yeah. though. Right, right in the front if you squint your eyes and look <laughs> very close. So I'm going to uh, turn this off and neutralize Mavish. Oh, you're good to step down. You should. Excellent. And Kayla, would you like to step up for a second? Okay. Just take out my nose ring real quick. <laughs> to... Sorry about that. I'm going to distract you with this metal ball. So for our next feat, um, my assistant Kayla is going to come up and do a similar experiment. Maybe we'll have more luck with Kayla's hair. Let's see. So what's what's that called? Does it this like, have any special name? is a baby graph scientific name, baby graph, and it's a baby. No, it's not, but it is just a, <laughs> another metal source where they'll be able to exchange okay. electrons. So Kayla will take a seat. She'll hold this. No, I didn't brush my hair, so this could get pretty wild. Maybe start by putting your hands on this. Let's try this first. Ooh, wrong stick. That's my electron detecting stick. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can feel it now. Oh, I feel it. Oh, it's here. Ah! Oh. Ow! Standing up right there. So I can definitely feel the electricity. Yeah, so can I. Can you see my hair standing I up? I can see it. Okay. That was Max Power. You should be good to step down, Kayla. See, that's the thing about science. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Try, try again. But always trust in it, people, or we're out of jobs. <laughs> But, um, so, I'd like to do this last demonstration. Neutralize it. So another thing we can do is conduct electricity. So we're building up electrons, right? The things that run through wires. We can conduct some electricity doing it. I have my magic stick. Don't have any jewelry. So first, I'm gonna turn it off max power. Cause I can feel the power from here. Now, oh, if you turn off the lights, you can really see some lightning. I don't know if your cameras can pick this up. And if we turn it up more, it'll be a bigger. Oh, wow. We can get a big lightning bolt. So this is our Van de Graaff machine. Um, the little children love it. They love touching it and having their hair stand up. So like I said, med science is an opportunity. We get to go in and teach children science and get them to do hands-on experiments. So if you are interested in becoming a mad scientist and getting to do a cool experiment like this, definitely look them up. So another experiment we do at mad science right. is some dry Gross. ice. So I'm going to start the dry ice action with gonna mix a little bit of cold and a little bit of hot and what we get is thermal equilibrium but in this case also smoke so dry ice is solid co2 as you can see it's kind of halloweeny spooky and it is a lot of fun. Not only do the kids go crazy in the classroom for it, we do at our mad science laboratory. So you can make, there you go. We're gonna pour some of these in here. Pour some of yeah. this in here. <laughs> Not an explosion, no worries. So we like to do a little, little shower little dry ice shower. 
shit. <laughs> cool you all from the electric van de Graaff earlier. Actually, it was really cool. Like, so, not only like temperature wise, but it's actually pretty. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. You, you can always shake it if it starts getting low. So you can grab this, and if you could dip it in these bubbles for me, sir. Of course. So other than the, and just leave it in there, other than the dry ice shower, they also love making some dry ice <laughs> bubbles. Here we go, there's some bubble action. So we'll just dip it in a little soap. Oh, wow. wow. And we got some cool dry ice bubbles. And yeah, Brilliant. so. <laughs> These are our beautiful, lovely experiments. They're a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun doing them at Mad Science. I like watching it get really, oh. That is some angry ice. I just need a little more bubble power. Could you open this for yeah. me? Pour it in there. Thank you, assistant. And we just want to dip the nozzle to get it. <laughs> and there you have it, some dry ice bubbles. Here's a little dry ice egg glue. And yeah, so if you are interested in doing some of these awesome experiments with children and getting them involved in science, you can visit the Mad Science of West New Jersey website. Or you can contact me, Kelso Burrell, through the school email, burrellk8 at gmail dot, at rowan dot students dot edu. You just look it up, you guys know. Well, uh, Kelso and Kale, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for bringing the dry ice and doing all these wonderful experiments and uh, keeping science in classrooms for it's little kids. Great. It's very it's been important. really fun. Thanks so much for having us. We appreciate it. So coming up after the break, we have Abby, Gill, Jessica, and Amanda, so don't go anywhere. Don't do it. <laughs> Open up your books to page 360. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Talking about inspirational quotes. You gotta believe in yourself. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. So we just heard from Kelso and Kayla, and now we're joined by Abby, Jessica, and Amanda from the College Diabetes Network. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies. How are you doing? Good. How about Good. You? Thank you for having us. So let's start with, with the College Di Diabetes Network. What do you do, and how did this club come together? Um, so the College Diabetes Network um, is a chapter that we created on Rowan's campus. Um, we're kind of right now a small group of about eight or ten um, members and we're kind of just here to create a community, I'm sorry, on Rowan's campus um, for type 1 or type 2 diabetics. Um, we started out, I actually kind of ran into yeah, Amanda. Yeah, we just happened to meet. Yeah, I saw the Dexcom in her arm, which is like diabetic terminology, but, um, <laughs> and then Jess was super interested in it before um, me and Amanda came to Rowan, so she kind of helped us, helped us with everything that we kind of needed to know. So it's just started, how much has it grown? Um, well, it just started out as um, me and Amanda, um, and it, we kind of started this semester, okay. but so it started from us two to now about, like I said, to eight members. Yeah, we have friends, like I have friends that are in the club that aren't even diabetic, so we just have people that want to learn about it, support us, things like that too, so it's really Definitely. nice. So you talk about that learning and supporting. Uh, how important is it for people to understand diabetes and how it affects people, especially on a college campus, and how are you trying to spread the awareness? I think it's huge. Um, I think that going to college and then also being a type 1 diabetic or type 2 is a huge transition. Um, I live at home, but these girls are away from their parents, and parents are normally a huge support system. So yeah. it's kind of hard to transition from that, and that's a way that 
we are stepping in and helping each other because we can all we text each other hey like you know this that so it's kind yeah. of awesome yeah i was newly diagnosed to like coming to rowan so like meeting just like abby just one person like helped me so much that's amazing now the college diabetes network is a national organization you guys have a rowan chapter so what is it like having a uh, working with that national organization and then bringing it to this campus? Um, well, I'm kind of the one in direct contact, but these girls know a lot about what they do and help us with. But um, it's awesome because we kind of have a mentor, and this mentor is helping us through starting up on the campus and kind of getting our feet wet and everything that we need to know. Um, but they also offer us m money like annually. So we got these t-shirts, yeah. we get like bracelets, Ooh. all the fun stuff that, yeah, that we can give to everyone um, at events that we go to. So that's like an awesome thing to have also. So how are you spreading awareness? Are there any events coming up? Have you held any events? Are you planning anything? Um, we actually kind of are, have our last meeting of the year um, tomorrow and Wednesday, um, but we just actually did the health expo. Um, yeah, that was really mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, had a table there, and then we're really looking to do some like events next year. Just the student or like organization fair, where kind of all the new or all the clubs are, and get our word out there. That's awesome. Um, how are you guys? How do you guys deal with it on a college campus? Like you were saying, what has been like the most difficult part, and what is something that you want to work with, work on through the through this organization? I think especially like eating food. You're so used to your parents cooking and like more healthy meals and stuff like that. So coming to school, you're eating really differently. So that affects your blood sugars. So some people have more lows, some people have more highs. So that kind of support is really nice, and we can all like ask each other like what do you do when you eat this and yeah. like that kind of yeah. thing so it's nice especially for her because she's so new at it so like she has a lot of questions yeah, and like you can be there like a huge and answer for her yeah like I've had it since <laughs> I was 10 and you've had it since you were really young yeah, too like 12, so, so. Wow. Mm -hmm. but you mentioned the uh, health expo that you guys just had so what exactly did you do with that uh, so like if I were like to walk up to the health expo or what like what went on during that event um well, we kind of had, it was funny, a lot of people coming up to get their little raffle signed, but I was the proponent of, you know, giving the spiel of saying, hey, I'll sign your raffle if you listen to my spiel and kind of advertise for us, because that's the point that we're at in our club right now, yeah. is really trying to expand our club and to make sure that all the diabetics on the campus hear about what we do and who we are. So that was like our main goal, I would want to say, at the Health Expo. Mm -hmm. um, but we did, like I said, have the goodies there and stuff for people to grab and just to remember us by. And so, so obviously all three of you are involved with CDN. Uh, what are your positions with the club? Um, I'm the president. I'm the senator. Yeah, and I'm the vice president. So what are what duties uh, entails in being president, vice president, and senator? Um, I would say president, I guess I kind of just am the one who, I don't really know my job is. I kind of support everyone. Everything. Yeah, I coordinate, yeah. I support the people. You reach out to in everybody. In the different positions, the yeah. I, and stuff like I that. try to gain the members and I send out emails and do the group me, stuff like that. So maybe the more organizational part of it. Yeah, and we are a new club. So starting next semester, also going to the SGA meeting. So we're going to try to build up the club and stuff like that. So I'm not really sure. I'll learn more like when I start going to the meetings and stuff, but kind of just doing what other clubs do too. Yeah, I guess I just assist Abby. Like she checks everything <laughs> over with me and we just yeah, you know, I bounce ideas her. off each other. Yeah. <laughs> what so. would you say the biggest misconception is of diabetes that people don't know and people don't realize? I think that's a great question. <laughs> um, I mean, especially for type 1 diabetics, I think we all know that sometimes we have this stigma of you can't eat sugar and stuff like that when mm -hmm. we live a totally normal life. I mean, yeah. you'll see us munching on candy sometimes, whether that's because our blood sugar's low or because we're simply craving it. But we know what we have to do to take care of ourselves. So yeah. I think that's the biggest misconception in my mind. I agree, absolutely. Anything for you? Any misconceptions that um, you thought? No, I think people either think it's like, way more serious than it is or like they think it's nothing and they're like whatever and has the wellness center kind of been helping you out have you been talking to a dietitian like what resources are there on campus for other people who are dealing with the same thing um i know that the wellness center offers you can get like go to see the doctor there and stuff like that um but scott woodside has been a great help to our club in general um because him and uh John Woodruff, who is at the Academic Success Center, are kind of our advisors. So they've been the ones to be in contact with me and try to start this club in general because they had parents coming to them asking if something like this was on Rowan's campus. Um, I don't live on campus, so I don't know if I know the direct resources that they can provide. Right, yeah. Yeah. Well, before like 
we even met John, like Abby and I weren't registered as diabetics on campus. Right. So like So those resources weren't necessarily they were open to us but we didn't know much yeah. about them. Yeah, like I used it for housing accommodations, but I think a lot of us kind of know what we have to do and stuff like that. It's still nice to have support from like people our age, but we might not necessarily like go to the wellness center. But that's why it's nice because maybe someone does go to the wellness center and they don't know like we're here. So that's why we're trying to reach out so people join our club. Definitely. Uh, really quick before I let you go, is there, obviously it's the end of the year, so meetings this year, people might be a little too late. Are there, is there any social media you want to promote, maybe people like, share, follow for next year? Yeah, we have a Facebook page, um, Rowan um, College Diabetes Network. Um, that's kind of the only social media we're using mm -hmm. right now. They can find us on the ProfLink page, um, and we post posters around, so look yeah. out for them. <laughs> right. Well, ladies, thank you so much for coming on the couch today, and best thank of you. luck with, with CDN in the future. Thank, thank you. you. And that does it for this episode of On the Couch for Mavish Khan and the rest of the On the Couch crew. I'm Tom Snapley. Have a great night.